Let's switch up gears. Let's talk about the other, another big category from the 90s, which is clearly pop music. You know, whether you love it or hate it, it was huge at that time. Where do you want to start out with the pop songs? Well, I mean, pop music is big in every decade. It's just, uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's the fabric. It's That's just true. the fabric, man. Um, and it's pop popular music. Yes, exactly. Uh, there, there were some great videos. Um, I mean, in the early part of the decade, again, if you want to talk about bridging the decades, that uh, that Madonna Vogue video was kind of, uh, I believe it was 1990 is it when was. that came out. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about something that was gigantic. I mean, Madonna's been, talk about something that just transcends decades, you know? Oh, yeah. Madonna put, put out something tomorrow and it'll be the biggest thing out there for, for a little while. But, uh, but, I, but I'll, 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 I remember that Vogue video very, very vividly. It, I remember it just being part of the culture. Yeah, it was all shot in black and white, like her and like a bunch of dudes. I don't even know if there's other chicks in the video. I can't remember. I think it was just her and a she's bunch doing, of dudes. And she's doing the thing with her hands. And oh every, yeah, and, and, and everybody was and everybody was doing that for everybody was doing that for a good five years. Yeah, definitely. And this song does, like when you were saying bridge, it does sound like something that is is of that era. Like it still sounds, it still has like an eighty sound. But it's also something different. Like you can start to see that the, the change in popular music at that time. Yeah, it's uh, well, I mean, the last I, I guess our last major hit of the 80s, I guess, I don't know, probably catch crap for this, too. It was probably a couple after she had so many damn hits was uh, like a prayer, which I was thinking was 90s. I was like, how did we think of that? Then I'm like, no, that was like 88 or so. But that almost felt more 90s than uh, both, which is kind of strange. That video, you no, know, it's, it's kind of weird thinking. But yeah, it was, it was um, it, but it was, it was a bridge and you kind of like kind of got a vibe that Madonna was doing something different. She wasn't, uh, she wasn't material girl anymore. She was, she was more sophisticated. It's a very sophisticated video. Definitely was. Very iconic. It's something you'll, you'll remember once you see it one time, especially like, it being shot in black and white really made it stand out because... I don't remember a lot of videos really doing that. At least the entire video, maybe a section of a video was shot in black and white, but this, this whole video from start to finish was black and white. Yeah, th that's one I'll probably, I'm kind of going to look up to see who the director was. <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm going to find out that that was, um, that was done by somebody of, of stature. I, I, I don't know why I'm just kind of getting that vibe. It might one down the long yeah. Holy shit. David Fincher directed the Madonna Vogue video. I don't know. Did somebody watch that video and go, all right, we want you to direct seven. <laughs> That's crazy. That is That's nuts. crazy. Yeah. I, I was wondering, because I was wondering if it was a Guy Ritchie deal, because Guy Ritchie, she obviously married Guy Ritchie down the road. That's why I was wondering if it was somebody with stature. Fucking David Fincher. That's good shit. Another uh, iconic video, which th there's color to this, but a lot of it is like black, white, and gray, is Jamiroquai's Virtual Insanity. And I'm not crazy. I, I think the song is okay. I'm not that crazy about the song, but I mean, the video is so friggin' cool. It's awesome. Even if you watch it now. I think it's a good song. I remember Jamiroquai being, being like a thing before this song hit because... People would buy, go to my record store to buy Jamiroquai bootlegs. Like he was one of those people that, or they were one of those bands that people got bootlegs of. So it was like a thing, but I, I it just, I, I never had any interest to check it out or explore it. And then that video came on and it was on all the time. And I, I thought it was kind of the coolest. Yeah. I mean, the, so the floor is like moving throughout the entire video and he's kind of moving along with the floor, but it's and also doing a lot of tracking shots and it's back and forth with the moving floor. So it's kind of this crazy thing going on. Right. And he's kind of like moving to the beat of the music also as the floor is moving. Like it's, it's very, it's very unique. I don't remember seeing another video quite like that. It's definitely one of those videos that is so very much a time of the place Yes. Like that was definitely that was that was my freshman year of high school, and that song and that video will always remind me of 
freshman year of high school. And I'm pretty I sure almost he wondered, like a, a VMA. Like I think that was the video of the year when that came out. I almost wonder too if like uh that was the beginning of the stupid Dr. Seuss hat trend because they kind of <laughs> looked like generic <laughs> hats. Dude, that definitely was because he had that big ass hat on his head that movie, that video. I guarantee you that was the beginning of that. People probably thought that I was super feel cool. like it was. Oh, and you know what? I'm looking up the director, this director's uh, credits. We don't need to touch on this one too much, but it was a cool video. He also directed the Karma Police by Radiohead video. Oh man, that's a great song. Great song. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's, this is this is uh, the, the the technology bad religion was warning us about. You know, I can just sit here while we're talking in discussion and see that David Fincher directed the Vogue video and that this guy also did uh, Karma Police. Oh, he also did. Oh well, he also did uh, one of my favorite videos, which I don't think I don't. I'm not sure if you've ever seen it. Are you familiar with the uh, group Uncle U N K L E? No, not familiar. They have some really, really neat videos. And he did uh, he did a video for Rabbit in Your Headlights, which is a really cool video. Check it out. I recommend. I'll definitely do that. Why we're on the subject of technology, you know, from videos like, like Jamiroquai's, a good thing to shout out, which this doesn't look great for like some of the, the computer graphics at the time, but TLC's Waterfalls at the time was an awesome music video. And this would, we talked about where we should categorize it. It probably should be under pop. Um, you know, obviously, like like left eye raps more than everybody else in the group. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's a hip hop crossover for sure. Um, but it's, it's a pop song. It, it's, um, yeah. it, I mean, they were definitely going for that '60s girl group deal with TLC, but with kind of a hip hop edge. They, they, they would had try a lot again. of hits, man. It worked. Yeah, they would, they would, they would try it again years later with uh, Destiny's Child. But TLC really, really, really kind of killed it. I, 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 I make no apologies by saying that I really like TLC. And I thought this video was great. I do remember, though, for a long time, mishearing it and not knowing the name of the song and thought they were saying, don't go Jason Waterfalls. Yeah, it kind of sounds like that. I could, I could see that, but... Yeah. Like, who's Jason Waterfall? Why, <laughs> why, don't they, why don't they want him to go somewhere? <laughs> Jason, don't go. Jason Waterfalls, don't they, go. They should have incorporated that into a Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just run into the camp and there's like waterfalls or something. <laughs> don't go, Jason. Wa- don't go, Jason. Comma, waterfalls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's the or I'm gonna start writing my screenplay. Yeah, he gets sucked back into the lake. Shit. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Jason um, takes uh Jason takes uh Niagara. But yeah, I liked how they were dancing in the water and stuff, but like the, the cool part of the video is when they they basically turn into like like a water rendition, like they're they're rendered themselves in like computer graphics, they look like water. And at the time it looked really cool. I remember it looking really cool, but those early computer graphics do not hold up well today. So when you see it, you're just like, oh my God, this looks not good. And it doesn't... No, not, <laughs> not, not everything is Jurassic Park. You know, Jurassic Park strangely somehow still holds up. I don't know how that... I don't know how that CG still looks good. But yes, music videos in the 90s that were very CG at the time were like, whoa, this is so cool. And now you look at it and you're like, hi, made for sci-fi movie, what's up? And then going into something a little bit more basic. I mean, this is as basic as a mu- music video could get, but uh, I-, I love the artist. I love a lot of her songs. Ironic by Alanis Morissette when she's just singing in the car and she's like, she's basically like playing almost like like a like a mother and a child and like maybe like a friend or like an older person. She's playing like four different characters in different seats in the car. And that the whole video takes place in this car. So obviously it was really low budget, but it's an awesome, like an awesome video of her just like, you know, people start rocking out to the song in the car, like one by one. And like the mother's like the last one holding out, like she's not going to start singing and shit. And then by the end of the video, she starts singing and getting into the song too. See, Atlantis Mars, that's one of those uh, artists that I did not get until I was much later in life. Like I, it just didn't, she just didn't do it for me. It, uh, again, it was, it was, it was too cool for school hipster, you know, 13 year old me, you know. When, I can uh, see that back then. Yeah. 
everybody because you couldn't get away from it especially if you worked at a record store you could not get away from it so it was Alanis was was a tough pill to swallow a jagged little pill for me to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um but I got it years later like and the, the video was definitely awesome and there and it shows it also there is so much you can do with a car a car is almost like the the most recognizable narrative you uh device you can use is a car because you've all been in a car you've all sat in a car you've all not wanted to be in a car and you've all made the best out of sitting in the car and i kind of feel like that's what that video is doing and but but the thing that always like i said i might have gotten alanis later in life but what always kills me about alanis is that she wrote all those songs about david collier from full house i don't know who that is uh, Uncle Joey. Oh, no way. Uncle. No way. Yes. yes. She was like a teenager and he was like an older guy dating her. And what? she wrote all those songs about her breakup with Dave Coulier. That makes those songs suck a lot more now. I, I know. So, Congratulate. You're, you're welcome. I bestowed like, this gift upon you. Like you ought to know is like such a great song. Like she's just fucking furious in that song. And like you can totally relate to it, whether you're a dude or a chick or like whatever, like you, you can understand where she's coming from. Clearly she's talking about pregnancy. So maybe not exactly if you're a guy, but you get the fucking point. Yes, I can't but she said that it was about him. It was about Uncle him. Joey. Uncle Joey and his horrible Popeye impressions. Oh my God. Cut it out, man. <laughs> sorry, I, I did my research. Now you I'm do sorry. yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. But yeah, but, but, you know, but nonetheless, you know, we don't, we don't, um, I, I guess I shouldn't do that because it's not right to shame people. Um, and you know what, Alanis, she loved Dave Coulier. Maybe, maybe he was a charming fella. Um, but yeah, I, I great artist. And I, I was actually a little bummed when uh, she announced that uh, they, she announced that big tour she was doing with Garbage, and I got a ticket, and it was canceled because of COVID. Yeah, when that tour started, I was like secretly hoping my wife would want to go and she didn't say anything. So like, I think if she does do the tour again, I'm just gonna be like, hey, we're, we're going to go see Lance more. So I, I don't care. And, 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 and I love garbage. So I was I, I thought that was just I thought that was like a perfect bill. Like I, th- that was like a bill that was like, that's perfect. I like you know, sometimes, songs. you know, you know, sometimes you have like, you know, somebody announces they're doing a big tour and you could give a rat's ass about the opener and you're probably going to be walking into your seat during the opener. Garbage is somebody I would get there early for, you know? Definitely. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier, really briefly, when you were talking about cars. Because some, as soon as you started talking about that, something we almost totally forgot to mention, it doesn't necessarily revolve around 90s music videos, but it's probably an important thing to mention. When we're talking about the, the advent of the car and it being like, you know, this, this the iconic thing that everybody's been in before, so it's perfect for music videos. It's also perfect for films. And I would be remiss if I didn't just throw out a mention here since we talk about stuff in the 90s, specifically music videos, but still, follow me along the trail. I got to mention Wayne's World and being in that goddamn AMC Pacer. What an iconic scene when they're singing Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, I, unbelievable. Well, perfect segue, because honestly, we, were, we, we didn't even mention that. We, we, did not, we, did not even, uh, we did not even put that in any of our notes. But the thing is, that technically, if you remember, Bohemian Rhapsody was re-released as a single, and the music video was the Wayne's World scene. Yeah, and that's you a good cannot, point. I forgot about and, that. And, that and, was and, re-released. It, 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 I mean, Bohemian Rhapsody was not a number one hit in the United States until it was re-released as a single for the Wayne's World soundtrack. And the video, and just because of that, that scene is so iconic. That makes the video iconic. You can't think of 90s pop culture without thinking about Wayne's World. Yeah. That was like I mean, one of the best things that ever came out of Saturday Night Live. Like they could have, they could have just like people give Wayne's World 2 shit. Wayne's World 2 is actually way better, Wayne's I think, than what awesome. people give it credit for. Wayne's World 2 is awesome. They could have made a third movie and done it, something it, different. It, I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not Wayne's, it's not, it's not the original Wayne's World. Like uh to, to to go off to- go on top off topic on a little tangent here but i remember uh, a good friend of mine my friend katie and i were talking about generation defining movies and her father brought up how 
the graduate was the defining movie of his generation. What was, and it, so to her, he said to her, what is the uh, generation defining movie to you? And she was like, Wayne's World. And I was like, I completely agree with that. I love it. The director was Penelope Spheris, who also directed, without a shadow of a doubt, my favorite music documentary, Decline of Western Civilization, which I definitely recommend anybody check out if you've never seen it. It's all about what it was like. It was basically her just following around first wave American hardcore bands in L.A., in the uh, in the early '80s, your Black Flags, your Dead Kennedys, your Circle oh, Jerks, sick. and those kinds of bands, and it's amazing. And then she followed it up with the Decline of Western Civilization Two, which was about your hair bands. So she is just a, <laughs> she is just a, one of the best. She's one of my favorite filmmakers ever. And Wayne's World, she got her huge payday with Wayne's World, and I was so happy for that. That makes me so happy. Pop culture defined '90s. Wayne's World. You don't have Beavis and Butthead without Wayne's World. Yeah, John. I want to. I just want to say one thing. I know you just got a new guitar, so just remember: no stairway. No stairway. No stairway. <laughs> best best movie prop ever is that sign. <laughs> that sign is so good. So good. The points of the sun. Oh so man, good. love Wayne's World so much. Damn, T. Carrera. Something else. Oh man. So good. so good so good her cover her cover of uh of uh ballroom blitz by uh by the suite in that movie so good so good yeah i can still see her playing that in my head man rocking the hell out that was awesome finally john uh let's go off on on, on two big notes here uh talking about the 90s pop i i did mention the boy band stuff before we're not really going to cover that, but obviously NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, 98 Degrees, they were the whole thing. We mentioned them. Right. They got their mention. More important than them were Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears. I mean, these two were like, you know, I would say Britney Spears was the Madonna of the 90s. I'm not say, trying to take anything away from Madonna, but I mean, she was on a whole, there was, there was pop stars and then there was Britney Spears. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because that's how I always kind of felt. Now, the difference is Madonna was more of an artist in that she created her own stuff. So, I mean, and she was actually a, a pretty decent actress, too, which is crazy to think about. Madonna. So Madonna, Madonna's kind of on another stratosphere. But as I can see that. As, I can totally agree with that. But as far as importance to the pop culture, to even the lexicon of things you would talk about. Britney Spears was massive. And I know it was the end of the decade. I know it was the end of the, it was, I guess it would have been 90. Was it when, when, when did, when did Britney mania start? It was probably in like 98? 97, but hit me baby one more time came out in 1998. And that it was, was not, no, it was not, it was 98. It was definitely 98. Cause that, okay. I was trying to think if it was my, if it was my, uh, I, I, I basically, everybody wonders how I know years and dates so much. It's just because I moved as a junior in high school. So it's easy. To, it basically is a timestamp. I have a time, what we say timestamp. I have a timestamp of 1998 beginning of, uh, was fall, fall of 1998 and everything that happened after I can kind of tell you what happened before and after. Right. Britney mania hits, but hit me baby one more time. And there was not a, boy or girl that did not have a crush on Britney Spears when that when that uh when that hits I mean that was um, a big reason for me to watch TRL and just wait for like, yes, the number one or two video to come on I'll wait for that sure let me see Britney Spears. And, I re- and I remember I remember being weird because it was like yes I obviously found her incredibly sexy and attractive but there was like this different kind of crush that I had on her than I had on other uh pop you know female pop singers I almost wanted to like meet Britney and hang out with Britney and like take her to meet my mom. Like there was just, even though she was so sexy and vivacious, it was just, <laughs> I don't know. It was, there was, there was like substance there. And I, I make no apologies by saying that I am a Britney Spears fan. And I remember when that, that hit me baby one more time video hit. And that was just like, holy shit. Like, and I, but I got to ask I think I know where you probably land. Were you team Christina or you team uh, team Britney? Definitely Britney. I mean, Christina had a couple of hits. I liked some of her songs. I would even say that she, Christina might have a better voice. She probably has she's, a better she's voice. She's a way better than singer. Britney Spears. She's a way yeah. better singer. 
way but better. Singer. I think Britney but, just had bigger bangers, you know, like they were like, you know, they were they would hit you more. Like they were, the, the sound like would the song would be better, but Christina could sing better. You know what I mean? But but here but here's the thing. When I look for a pop star, the thing I ultimately look for is just natural jump off the screen charisma. And Britney, they're gonna they're gonna change the name of charisma one day too. You have Britney. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, she captured everyone's attention for sure. But let's be real. Christina Aguilera was always second fiddle to her. And she had a better voice than her. Like, that's crazy. Like, it didn't matter. Her voice did like her better voice didn't matter. No, she she was um, yeah, yeah, Brittany was Brittany was uh, you know, the backstreet boys, and uh Christina was in sync. But but in sync, in sync <laughs> somehow somehow in sync gets credibility because Timberlake becomes becomes huge on his own. But at the time. You know, they were this, they were the, it was always, they were the behind. They were the, well, and then, the and then 98 thing. degrees basically got shoved off the face of the earth, essentially. Like they weren't even like, they were a thing for like a couple of years and that was it. That one dude married yeah. Jessica Simpson. That was like, yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say that was band. the biggest claim to fame was that uh, the reality show that we would watch in, uh, we would watch in uh, F Court at Stockton. <laughs> newlyweds. <laughs> Trick beers, newlyweds is on. <laughs> And we uh, still got an hour to kill before MXC comes on. <laughs> but yeah, that, that would that would be that I would say like you know Christina Aguilar definitely better voice you know awesome video obviously Genie in a Bottle was huge she had she had a few other hits that I remember but nothing like Britney Spears like like I'll never forget her videos. Here's the thing: aside from my record store, I also worked in a farmer's market, and we would also we would play Top Forty. I didn't mind when the Christina Aguilera songs would come on. I'd get legitimately fucking stoked when the Britney songs would come on. And then I was much happier when we switched the, uh, the radio over to classic rock, but <laughs> right. that was, but that was, uh, but, but I was definitely way more on board with that. Britney. 